order at 702. Okay. At 702, that's what my clock says. Um, and start with the minutes of the previous meeting. I have one, second, one second. suggested um, clarification in the at the bottom of the first page, it says something about referring to Scott. And I don't know whether Scott is a first, I don't remember, but we need to have a first or a second name for Scott. Who is Scott? Uh, only, only comment. Todd, do you know that who that would be or Donna? Yeah, but it's um, Heather and Scott. I see him on the bottom. So I would need Scott's last name. I'm Scott. It's Scott Personati. And I'm with Arbor Services. Thank you. You bet. We've got an echo going. Have to mute yourself. Do we still have an echo? No, we're good now. Okay. Okay, okay so Scott per Personati. So um, any other changes? Um, I don't know if it's necessary, but at the top of the second page, uh, it says commission was informed that the stream led into Kent Falls Brook. The commission was advised that the ashes were dead. Should we say ash trees? Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I did. I did. My brain did a split second reread when you got there, Paul. So good, good point. <laughs> okay, any other um, corrections or questions? Nope. Okay, then we are, sounds like with those changes, we need a motion with those changes to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of November 29th. So moved. Thanks, Mark. Second. Thanks, Paul. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay. Thank you both. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to new business application 1300 22, Carrie Strawbridge and Fernando Sila Diaz. I hope I'm saying that right. 445 Cedar Mountain Road, tree, tree remove removal and extension of boardwalk within wetland area. And that's the material that we have we have for tonight's meeting. And is there someone here yes. representing? Hi. Carrie Turbridge. Carrie. Hi. hi Carrie. Hi. hi. Um Ty, I don't know if you've had a chance to, you know, kind of see the site, go over if you want to go over the application with us and then let Carrie kind of walk us through, or would you rather just hand it over to Carrie? It's up to you. I have not been out to the site, but I do understand that you're somewhat familiar with it because there had already been a boardwalk approved yeah. at one point. So this is an extension of what had already been approved previously. So um, yeah, I'll let her explain the rest. So before we do that, are you saying that the this is an extension of the boardwalk is what That's you're saying, right. not of the application? Okay, great. The original one. Okay. Okay, Carrie, okay, if you could just walk sure. us through what you want to do. Thank you. Sure, I'd be happy to. So there, there are two parts to this that are actually totally independent, except for one tiny um, relevant thing that connects them. So um, like many homeowners, we have a number of dead ash trees. Um, we just <laughs> saw that with the, the minutes. Um, and we have one very, very tall tree that is right, it's about, I don't know, five or six or seven feet from the, um, just within the 200 foot mark in our property. So it's just barely in the regulated area. And I put a picture of it in the materials. You can see it's the very long, the very tall tree there. Um, and we had some concerns about it. I mean, we could obviously let it just fall by itself, um, but, uh, if we do this boardwalk extension, which we'd like to do, um, then it's kind of dangerous if somebody's building that or they're, somebody's on it. Um, and in general, it just makes us nervous to have such a tall tree just falling kind of wildly 
on the property. At one point, I was actually worried that it could hit our house if it falls backwards, but the arborist said that based on a splitting that just recently happened in the trunk, he doesn't think it could fall towards the house, so I guess that's not a concern anymore. But at any rate, it is definitely dying, almost dead, susceptible for removal. So I think the question is really just what's the best process for doing that? Um, and similarly, and there's another ash tree, I didn't even realize this, but there's another dead one right in a pair with it. And similarly, um, on the side of the boardwalk we already have, there's another dead ash tree with another smaller ash pair to it. Um, and that one definitely poses a risk to anybody on the boardwalk or and the boardwalk itself. Um, so what we did was we talked with Emmons Tree and Landscaping Services. They've done a number of uh, tree removals in non-regulated areas on our property about the best way to remove these trees. And I had actually talked to them a while back and they had told me, you know, they're very aware of the, the rules around regulated areas. And they said, well, we certainly could never do this unless number one, you get approval. And number two, we know that it has to be in a winter-ish month where it's, the ground is hard. So I didn't submit an application. And then I think the time went by and many months went by. And when I realized it was time to do it, they said that their quote was kind of, you know, outdated. So Sean came back just last week and everything is very current now. He submitted a new quote and we went over by phone the method that they've used to remove the trees. Um, and I, I think the only points I just wanted to clarify are that number one, previous owners of the property had, a, there's kind of a path that leads down to the lake, um, just a, a path, a clearing in the woods, a small narrow path. Um, and that still exists, even though we don't really use it. And for one of the tree pairs, he was gonna access the tree from that path. And I just walked the property on Sunday and there's a pretty clear area to get through to. It's not like there's tons of woods that you have to get through. Um, and I might even be able to share my screen and show you photos if you, if you wanna see the access. Um, and then the other point is just that that big tall tree is very, very close to the regulated area so they're not it's not like again it's not like they're getting into the woods and doing all this stuff in the middle of the woods it's right by where the lawn ends so that's the first part i don't know if you want to talk, talk about you know ask questions before i move on to the other part so the the tree that's in our the picture of the tree that's in our application is the first one that's very kind of on the edge of the regulated area the there second, should be two pictures that's right that's the first okay. picture mm -hmm. okay the second picture is the other two trees you're talking about. Oh, wait, you know, I don't know. I know the order of the PDF I sent. In the PDF I sent, the first tree that's shown, which has a little piece of the boardwalk in it, that mm -hmm. picture, that's mm -hmm. the one that's deeper into the regulated area, but would be accessed by this path that already exists. And then and the deep second, into, how deep, how deep in? Deep, yeah. Um, let me think. Um, I would say that one is more than 50 feet in, maybe closer to 75 feet in something along. It's like you have to walk down the boardwalk a good way to reach it. Maybe, yeah, I would say it's maybe between 50 and 75 feet into the regulated area. So how far from back our from property? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, so it's like 125 feet back from something the like that yeah okay. yeah neither neither of these is really at the lake edge okay and then my only other question um is this really steep here or relatively flat um so in both cases so i would say that the you know there's a it's there's more of a slope than you would think um, we are always surprised how, how steep the slope is because you can't really tell when you're looking at the lake from the house. Right. I would say, I, I don't know my grades except for what I read on the road with the truck signs. Um, it's definitely not a 9% grade, but it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's definitely a slope. It's not totally flat. 
I'm not okay. sure. And that might have influenced where he thought it would fall or not fall. Yeah. I think okay. you can see the slope in that first picture of the tree. Yeah. Yeah, but you it's can not, see. Yeah. It's not really, it's hard to tell even looking on. Yeah, it, that's why I'm asking, actually. There's no topography on the site map, which so why do we you need to make sure. To See if I can share my screen to show sure. you some other pictures I took. Because I mean, it's hang on not, one second. It's Ty, not. We need. To, okay. I'm it's sorry, not Carrie. Deep, steep. It's not okay. Oops. Let me see. Hang on one second, Carrie. Okay. Ty, uh, do you have any um, topo maps of this area, or in the future, we kind of need to get topography onto the site map? It's one of the required elements of the plan. The reason I'm asking is because that picture does look really steep. I'm not saying that that's a reason not to approve this. I'm just saying maybe we need to make sure that we're taking care. I mean, are they gonna are they gonna walk down the path? Are they gonna drive down the path? Are they gonna hand cut the whole thing as you described? Oh, oh, so no, I should um, clarify what their plan is. And it's not steep like, um, I mean, it's easy to walk it. And maybe if I can share a screen, I can show you some other pictures I'd show. It's not as steep as I think it looks in the photograph. Um, it's just like kind of a, you know, an incline. But no, their plan is to use ropes to safely lower the trees. That's their plan. Okay. And in both cases, there's actually a good access point, which is nice. It's not like right near the lake. It's not like deep in the woods. In, in both cases, they can really quite easily access the tree. And so will they be using a big truck to go down there with a with a Yeah, I think they will. They will. But in in the first case, there's already this path that a truck could fit on and the, and there's no trees that they're knocking down to get there or anything okay. like that and then in the okay. second case they the lawn ends right before so the thing they're going to be mucking up is our lawn okay all right i've got a question i'm reading uh um Emmons Tree and landscaping uh their quote <clears throat> right. they're talking about using an excavator down right. in there, but not bringing heavy equipment actually down there, but dragging it out with an excavator. Right. So is there going to be a landing point that they're going to be dragging this to? And then I assume it says they're going to uh, chip up the brush material. So that'll be chipped up on site. Will that so be at they, a landing area? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, what they do, what I've seen them do with trees that are not in the regulated area is they they keep their chipper, their truck with the chipper. It's not like right there. They actually drag with men, they drag all the brush out and then they feed it into the chipper thing. Um, and I know because we actually didn't want them to chip a lot of stuff. We were really like, don't, don't do that. Um, so we were sort of paying attention to what their process was. They definitely have to go into the area to get the stuff out. Yeah, um, that, that's what I'm looking at. Cool. Is yeah. Going yeah. in with an excavator, it's a lot less of an impact than going in with a rubber tired machine. Oh, okay. Actually, I don't even know what that that, that option means. A track, an excavator with, with tracks on it, as opposed to having something with rubber tires on it. Oh, oh, oh. It yeah. distributes no, the weight load a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's what you're describing. I mean, that's what he said in his proposal. Right. And the question is, where is where is he dragging the trees to? Is there a plan for that? That's what he's trying to get. I see. So, well, the truth is that we we want to use the the ash that burns well for, for for wood. So, what we did in the past was they actually brought the you know, they cut the logs into rounds, like 18 inch rounds. And then we stack them up and the guy who um, mows our lawn uh, splits them and makes them into firewood and we stack them up and put them on the driveway. But the okay. chip, whatever is chippable, they put in the chipper and then they just take that off the property. There we go. Okay, so the tree that's farther into the regulated area will be dragged down the path to your lawn. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, up the or path. Up the path? We, 
yeah. and we have kind of a, a ramp on our lawn. So, and it's, it's not, the whole thing is actually not that far from the driveway. So they drag it up. Um, I mean, I guess we, we, I haven't really talked about this with them, but I mean, if it makes more, I, that would be my preference. If our wood splitter person can split it down there and take it up, I don't know which is sort of more feasible. I think I'd prefer them to take the big heavy rounds if they could, um, but all that's just mucking up the lawn. That really doesn't affect the wetlands area. Well, if they're cutting it down down at the site, that could up and down that hill could create an erosion problem. Um, drag, you know, dragging that stuff up, chipping, ch chipping. Uh, all of the chipped material gets take, taken off site. You're saying. That's what they've done before. We had one thing chipped where we left some chips in a pile because we thought we might use them, but you know, they're sort of still sitting there in the pile. So I'm not sure how this, this is a lot of chips. So I don't really think we'd want those chips. Yeah. So maybe that's kind of information you could bring back to us for the next meeting um, because that's when we would be able to take action on this anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, think about the least harm to that hillside. Is it dragging it out? Ask them. Uh, and they, they could provide the, the answer to that question as well, probably. Yeah, yeah one of the things I mean, I'd like to get clear from them is, uh, in, in, here again, going back to their, uh, um, well, their description of the tree removal, um, they're saying using the excavator to carry the debris out of the wetlands will help limit disturbances because we will not need to go back and forth. So I'm assuming that right. they're going to drop the tree and drag it out whole. Right. Now, okay. that, if they're going to do that, it's one and done. So this way they're yeah. not going back Oh, and forth. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I did not think of framing it that way with them. So mm -hmm. sure, I can ask them. Yeah, if we can sure. clarify that, that would help too. So just getting it out, like dragging it to a place where they can cut it up out of the wetlands is a better way to do it or yes. cutting it up into big chunks to get it out and then littler chunks out of the wetlands is better no the better way to do it is to get it out of there once and not keep going back up and down that path i see yeah there's very and maybe next time i could show you there's actually very little path until you get to the tree just either way either yeah. way that disturbance is going to end up creating um the, the potential for sedimentation and runoff down into the lake, which is what we're trying to avoid. I see. Okay. Okay, I'm just taking some notes. Okay. So that was part one. Okay, part two, so that was part, part one. Two. So part, part two is just that um, we, so we built this boardwalk um, after getting approval from all of you, and we love it. It's amazing. It's so wonderful to walk down there. And, you know, a lot of people don't like wetlands because they, you know, we love it. We love the, the way it looks and feels and all the sounds. And so we really like being down there. And when our deck and the existing deck, when we got the house, we realized it was basically rotting in certain places. And we uh, replaced it this summer, we didn't want to just get rid of those boards. Um, and we had the idea of having a sort of offshoot to the boardwalk that would allow you when you to it's almost like like when you go to to see public wetlands and you go walk along a boardwalk that allows you to look at them. That's the idea. So it's kind of a it's not to access the lake. It's a it's a boardwalk that goes along inside, set a little bit in from the shoreline that allows you to just sort of walk along there and experience it in a different way. So what we're proposing is to use the exact same method that you already approved, which worked out very well. Um, I mean, we like how it works and it looks nice and everything's just been fine with it use the exact same method to do this offshoot using uh, the boards that we salvaged. 
And then if we need to also adding some other boards of, you know, natural wood, we don't really know how much from this giant pile that we saved from the deck. We don't really know how much is going to, how far it's going to take us. So it looks like on the map that you're actually now going into the wetland, but the wetland boundary ends before the boardwalk. The wetland boundary that is showing up on this map ends and the boardwalk continues. And I, I can't tell if you're actually going in the wetland. Your existing boardwalk does not go into the wetland per se. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we wouldn't be... Um... I see what you're saying. I don't think that we would be going in. Um, hmm. I don't really know what that, you mean where, where it shows those near the edge of the water, where it shows the, um, this sort of green triangle symbols. That's what you mean? I'm looking at the wetland symbol, which is kind of like a little line with, a bunch of lines sticking sticking up, little tufts, if you will. Yeah, the tufts. Yeah. Yeah, this would be, um, yeah. Well, our existing boardwalk does cross through that because it accesses the water, right? Got so it. It, it just, it goes all the way through it to the edge, but you're right that it's just a tiny little sliver that gives you access to the water. And what we're doing would not be in that area. It would be before you get to that area because frankly, we wouldn't, I don't think we could even put a boardwalk there if we wanted to, certainly not with this method. To do a boardwalk there, you'd have to do some like really, you know, you'd have to drill and stuff. It would not be easy because it's actually very, very wet there. Yeah, um, so you're actually hanging a left before you get there. Right. Yeah, you're hanging. It's the whole thing is a hanging a left from the existing boardwalk and then going along. And you will see that you get, yeah, you get, we mostly are going to cross this clearing. Um, okay. And I don't know how far we'll get. But the wetland boundary, mm -hmm. does it just stop like that? It, it may, it may, right? Well, it's um, woods there. It's woods there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're saying you're skirting the edge of the wetland, you're not going into it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do you have an idea of how many feet you're adding on, how long it is? So um, my husband, I, I asked him to try to do that measurement and he said it was a maximum 160 feet. I'm, we could get out there with our measuring. We have one of these big long measuring things um, and, and try to do a better run for you, but that's roughly what we're talking about. Yeah, we, we really need to know how wide, how long, um, and how far away from the edge of the wetland. Ty, I think it would be worthwhile for you to take a, take a look at this because it does get kind of close to the wetland there. And they are, they're talking about cement, the same system, the cement posts. Right, the cement yeah. footers, I should say. <laughs> yep, the exact exact same way that it that it was first time was previously installed. Yeah, so maybe I mean, just verifying the location time. of the wetlands. Yeah, would be helpful. And when we get the revised map with the topo, maybe they could be corrected to not show this boardwalk running all the way out into the wetland. Yeah, well, the existing one does go into the wetland a little bit. Okay, it's labeled as proposed boardwalk. I'm sorry. I think so it's just the old map. Yeah, yeah this, this is the map that we used. This oh, is the oh, same I'm map sorry. that was... I'm sorry. I understand now. I, I, I understand. Yep. Sorry, well, it's I... not this proposal. It's the old proposal. I think as long as we're updating the map, Let's the map it. ought to say that the, the existing boardwalk rather than proposed. Proposed, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just didn't know if we had to hire um, a surveyor. And you can you that. can just white out the proposed and write in okay. existing, okay. and yeah. and okay. put a okay. date, a handwritten <laughs> okay. date on the map. Okay. But are are you asking for Topo this time as well? Just for clarification, she has to have somebody go out there and do that for her as well. Or she can use a site map on an existing topography map, which is what we've done often. 
so okay. that we can at least locate where these trees are on this slope. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, how far away, what the, what the slope is. And also as you get down where they're putting in this boardwalk, is it gonna be cut into a hill? Is it fairly level? I don't, I can't tell from, no, it's, you it's know, we can't It's pretty tell. level. It's not that. Yeah. It's so we just need to show that. We just need to show that. We just need record. it on paper for the file. Right. Right. And again, a site visit could also help verify that. And uh, sorry, is so that something uh, maybe Taya could follow up with you? Yeah. Are you there, Carrie? Carrie, did you hear that? I, I'm, I'm going to try to log in, call in. It's not working. Um, my okay. phone, sorry. Let me try to zoom in. Okay. You're coming through clear. Yeah, you are now. Ty did nod yes that she working could now. Uh, it's come and see. She could schedule a visit with you. Okay. I was trying to call one second. I was gonna try to call in on my phone because I was having trouble here. Um, yeah, a site visit, that would be great. Oh, there you are, Carrie. Sorry. You're coming in. <laughs> okay, any okay, other I'll, questions? I'll reach out to you, Carrie, and, and we'll arrange a site visit and then we'll talk about what has to be added to the map. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any other as questions? Long as, it's, and it's not super expensive. A lot of this can just be um, drawn in up to scale. Um, yeah, we're not requiring that you go out and get another survey or anything like that. Okay. Um, and we have a lot of existing resources that you can use, that we can use to kind of overlay the site so we get a better sense on paper of the slope. Does uh, Marge or Ken or Paul have any other questions? Nope. Oh, not right Hi now. Hi to you. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got a plan, and we'll see you again next, next month. Okay, thank you so much. Right, Thanks, Carrie. Well, I, just, I just wanted one more thing. Oh, wait, okay. wait, Carrie, wait. Wait, Carrie. Wait, Carrie. Wait, Carrie. Who's still there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. The other thing, uh, just as far as the trees go, uh, just try to clarify those couple of points that we had asked, uh, and also a staging area where they plan to actually work on the trees, cut them down and chip everything up. Got it. Okay, I will okay. do that. Um, and right. oh, the other thing, I, is this the last Zoom meeting that you're having? Is this, um, I could, would I be able to Zoom or I, or I need to be there in person in as January? As far as I know, we're going to continue to have Zoom meetings. Okay. Yeah, it, it may go to hybrid at some point, but I think Zoom, the Zoom option is going to continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. Bye. Happy holidays. All right. So we just need a motion to table application 1322 while we get additional information to the next regular meeting. So, so moved. moved. I'll second. 20, okay, there thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay, great. All right, on to old business, um, application 1298-22, Arbor Services for Phil Corsant. Um, oh, yes, this was the conversation. Yes. And we I see you provided the additional information. Um, do you, let's see, Bill is here. Hi. Do you want to, and Scott is here. Do you want to add anything or just kind of say anything else? Oops, you're on uh, mute. Yes, yeah, so we've made the modifications to the map as you had requested. Uh, you. We changed it a little bit. Jocelyn was able to, mm -hmm. it looks like bigger areas, but actually what she did was she just circled the, the crowns of the trees now. And it's all explained, the measurements, everything is in this in her new map. Yep, that and looks then, great. Yeah, she did a really nice job with it. We're yeah. pleased with it. And then over um, on the Brooks side, we also, or she also indicated the yellow as the hay waddles to just show uh, the line along the brook there. That's great.
That's great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Ty, are you okay with this? Ty? Yes. Yeah. All right. Other questions? Okay, I think we're good to go. Excellent. Really appreciate you getting us the additional information with the additional detail. Thank you. Thank no you. Pleasure. Okay, so if there's no other questions for um, Bill or Scott, sounds like we can entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve application 1298-22. Great, okay, second. Second. Thanks. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Okay. Uh, okay, abstaining because I wasn't here last week. Oh, um, can we do that? I don't know that we can I don't do mean that. To, uh, okay, if we're too short-handed, then I, then I won't. That's fine. Yeah, you, for the purposes of a quorum, you can vote, I believe. It doesn't matter if you were there or not. It matters whether or not you understand the materials. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, right. I, don't, I don't see anything wrong. Right. Okay, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's try that motion again to approve application 1298-22. Um, motion to approve application 1298-22. In March, we second I'll again? I'll second, yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Opposed. Abstain. Okay, great. I thank have you. This before. <laughs> Again, thanks you guys a lot for um, working thank with us. You. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. Well, thank, you. thank you. Okay. Application 1299-22, Ashley and Ryan Williams, pond dredging. Did we have any outstanding questions, Ty? Yeah, you just asked um, for them to place on the map where the stockpile area would be and where they would put their silt fence, and they did draw that and in. And that's what's on this map, and you're okay yeah. with it? Yeah, yeah, it's right by the driveway, so it's a very convenient, ideal area for it. Okay, great. <clears throat> any other questions on it? Are we ready to move on this application? If so, we could we could take a motion. I'll make a motion to approve application 1299-22 with the um, additional information on the map. I'll second, sorry. Thanks, Ken. Paul, are you still uh, taking a look at I'm it? Okay. Or are you okay? okay. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, what? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Happy holidays. You too. All right. Um, we also have under written communications, the budget July through October, which I don't think, unfortunately, I don't think I got. So for those of you who did get it, any questions on it? And Ty, is there anything you want to draw our attention to? No, everything's on track. Um, there, you know, is a health. I'm sorry, you're cutting sure out a little I point bit. to the South Planning and Zoning as well. The health insurance is a little, the health insurance is a little bit skew because of the change in, but that's going to work itself out next year. It's expected when, you know, personnel changes. But other than that, you're on, on, on track. track. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And then we have um, 6A2 bylaws review per section six. Hmm. So this um, is your, the, just to note, this is your annual, you know, approval of bylaws. One thing that Donna actually I wonder, pointed out to me after I actually read the bylaws, you having a hard time with me? 
You're yeah, just going in and out. I wonder if you just turn off your video from if that would help. Is that any better? Maybe. Keep going. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I just wanted to point out that you did your election of officers and after reading the bylaws, I noticed that you didn't elect the secretary, but Donna did point out that last year you chose not to. So I don't know if that's something you want to adjust in your bylaws hmm. to not have a secretary because it does actually require that you have one. So um, I just wanted to point that out. It's totally up to you what you want to do. Well, you know, I, I was reading through that uh, a little while ago as well. And I, I, I noticed that it says that we should have a secretary, but the duties of the secretary are pretty much done by Donna. Correct. Right. So do maybe we, we should change it to secretary? may have, maybe we should change the word to may have a secretary because there are times, there have been times when we haven't had a clerk and I'm trying to remember who our um, wonderful wetland commissioner was, but he took the Eric. minutes. It was Eric Seaplick was the secretary of treasury. And when right. he left, you guys had said, well, we're not really going to need anybody. So mm. we, you never reelected anybody as the secretary treasurer as because as Paul noted, we had we did have a clerk. Yeah. And if we didn't have a clerk, the question becomes, would the land use administrator in this case, Ty, be willing to do what you did, Donna, which was. Um, to, you yeah, know. I absolutely yeah. would. It's it's not a problem at all for me. Because I don't remember before Eric. I don't remember a secretary actively keeping records, keeping the minutes before. I think it was just a nominal thing. Yeah, and right. he only he only did it because I remember it feels him like he did it for a short amount of time. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, Eric did. I, I, he actually took notes because we weren't at that time. Yeah. We were not recording. Right, but I was just saying right. whoever what whoever was the secretary before Eric, I don't think did. No, I don't think they did the minutes. I think the, Eric's the only one I remember doing it. That's right? right, and I believe he did it for a short period of time, not the just entire time. Just because we didn't have enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think I know that even when I was working for Jennifer as the land use clerk. I never did minutes for wetlands. So I never had anything to do with wetlands until I became the land use administrator. She did everything. She did all the applications. She did the minutes. She did she the did agenda. The minutes, yeah. So, and I think we really were without an enforcement officer or we were without her services because she was on maternity leave or something. Maybe that's what it was. And I think that's why okay. Eric. Yeah, filled in. it could have been because then I was filling in and trying to do her job and the land use administrator job on a part-time basis it wasn't right. like on a full-time basis so i think that's when eric might have come in yeah so we could modify the bylaws just to change the word shall to may which gives us the flexibility yeah um i think that's probably better than doing away with the position Ty, what do you think? Yep, that, that makes sense. Could you read this? Can, so can we do that right now? If you read the, the existing and change to as a motion? Why not? Or do we need to go through some other process? Hmm. No, I think, I think all she needs to do is just read the section and then just agree to the change. Uh, the last article, it says the bylaws may be amended by a two thirds vote of the entire voting membership of the commission only after the proposed change has been read and discussed at a previous regular meeting, except that the bylaws may be changed at any meeting by the unanimous vote of the entire voting membership of the commission. All right. So we'll have to put this on the agenda for the next meeting then. Right. And, and we have to have four people as a quorum anyway. Is that two thirds? Yeah. Right, so you'll have to have Ken Johnson here at, so that you have, well, he's not here tonight, so you can't vote at 100%. We don't need 100%. We don't need 100%. If we discussed it at this meeting, we need, what did you say, Paul, two thirds? Uh, at the next? Two thirds, yeah. Right. Yeah, if we wanted to do it tonight, we would have had to have the whole, Ken would have to Mission. be here. Right. So, so for, we, we, we could, we, obviously we have discussed this. So we table this to the next meeting for a vote. Yeah. Correct. 
And then we need four, four of us to be here for that meeting. Right. Okay. So why don't we make a motion to table uh, this conversation for action, that change for action at our next regular meeting. So moved. Second. I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Great. All right. One, one other thing on that subject. There, there's many references to the chairman. Chairman. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Okay. I mean, it doesn't, most, you know, it's an interesting question. Chairperson, yeah. chairman is a commonly uh, right. used term for male and female. Yeah. All, no matter yeah, where they, they also, are. They also make reference in one of the articles here as the chairman, he may. Oh, well, we should change that to he, she may, or right. they may. They, that I agree they with. May. They. I'm trying to find it. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Keep going, Paul, while we're at it. Might as well get them all. Well, do we have to make that proposal tonight or we can just bring it up to the next one? I think we should discuss it. Right. Okay. Just discuss like the bylaw says. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So glad you have those handy. Well, maybe anywhere where there's a reference to he in the chairman position should be called they. I would that. prefer it be he slash she because they. It's not grammatically correct, but it is definitely um, acceptable. OK, well, it's it's the term of the day in terms of. Well, now, wait a minute. Here is on Section four. Vice chairman shall act for the chairman in his slash her absence. He slash she shall be a member of the commission. Mm -hmm. We can make it consistent with that. Right. I just noticed that after having said what I just said. So the, the only reason I raise the word they is that there's a large movement afoot to not force a gender recognition, he, she. Yeah, but I think this is a different situation. It's well, maybe not. I, I... It's up to you. I mean, I'm, I'm just raising it. Well, I since really... we've already got the he slash she in there, I think we should make that consistent. And then if it ever comes up, um, yeah, because here yeah, it is in, in Article 10, Section 3, it says him slash her. Uh, okay. So, so I, we I just make it we consistent. We should go through and make those well. changes. Make those changes consistent. He, she, him, yep. her, depending on the tense, the whatever. Grandma. And Where you want it, it and you'd like to keep chairman, chairman, not chair. Yeah. Okay. We'll make those changes and have it ready for the next meeting. Great. I mean, it's up to you guys. I, uh, to me, the word chairman and chair are interchangeable. Do you think we should get drop the man? No, I don't. Well, no. I mean, the selectman. We've got the board. Uh, Gene is first selectman. Yeah, we're, here, we're, so. we're making an issue out of not nothing. No one's raising a problem. Right. So. Right. We're spinning our wheels on. Minutia. I think we just well, if we're going to change part. the bylaws, we might as well have the discussion right now about whether or not we're going to change it. That's all. Well, and I and do I see care. in Article 10, Section 5 uses the word chair, whereas all the other parts of that article say chairman. So I think just getting the whole the bylaws in sync, the the different sections using chairman, using he he slash she or him slash her, whatever grammatically is needed in the sentence. Okay. What I would propose. I don't have a problem with it either way. Nope, I don't have any problem with any of it, so. Anything else you see there, Paul, that we ought to talk no. about? No. <laughs> okay. No, that was the only thing. It, it, it was just, you know, some inconsistencies with that. Yeah. No, well, it's a good idea to get Get it all in sync. Okay, so we just need a motion then to table this discussion for action at the next regular meeting. So moved. moved. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? All righty. Okay, so we do have uh, one final bit of business under verbal. Um, 
And this is Ross Cole, 23 Stonewall Lane, pre-application review. And um, <clears throat> have the materials here. And Ty, if you could maybe quickly give us an overview of uh, why you thought we needed to see it in a pre-app form, and then maybe we could ask. Sure. Um, Mr. Cole, yep, Mr. Yeah. Cole came forward um, and he's he's developing this site. It's kind of a tricky site with regard to wetlands. He's requested this pre-application review himself before he goes into final draft on his um, site plan. So he's just basically hoping to review this with you and see, um, you know, look for any comments or issues. Why is it a tricky site? Would you like me to uh, chime in? Well, I'd like Ty's opinion. Um, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll... yeah, I, I think it's the the wetlands, the conservation area, the entrance into the site is, you know, a very small, you know, area to get through to begin with. Um, and there's just not a lot to work with on that site as far as, you know, unregulated areas. So um, he's trying to fit in what he can. Um, and he wants your opinion on it, I think. So this you think will likely be a wetlands application because of the site, no matter what. This will turn into um, a full application. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Okay, Ross, why don't okay. you walk us through what you wanna do? Sure, uh, so right now um, we are uh, in, we have an agreement to uh, purchase the site. And so what we're doing is trying to do our due diligence to understand what challenges we might have. And uh, as Ty was just uh, referencing, the site is divided up into two areas that has a brook that runs uh, between those two areas. It's shown on the, the drawings that were submitted to you. And the area that's been explained to us so far that is the most promising for being able to locate a house in, I think more in particular, a septic field is on the other side of the brook. So there's a gap in the conservation easement that allows, I would imagine, for being able to pass through that area is the purpose of it. And one of the things that is a concern is how the commission feels about having to cross over a brook. And um, for instance, that's one of the reasons why included in what was submitted to you is a culvert that was uh, installed many years ago. I don't have an exact date on it, but I, it seems to date back at least prior to 2004. And the concept of, is that something that would be acceptable to the commission in today's world to cross over the brook? Or would the commission be looking for something different in there? or other even other things that um, we're not even aware of that uh, we should be aware of. What we're trying to avoid is we don't wanna to come to you with a completely thought out plan, having spent thousands of dollars on a civil engineer and everybody else to do this, and then be having a tug of war because we're thinking, wow, we already sunk all this money into this stuff. So we wanna try and get your thoughts on it to help, if you will, share some wisdom to what uh, you've seen in the past to provide some guidance on whether or not, um, or what things we should be keeping in mind here as, as we uh, look at the, what the options are on this site. Well, um... I'll say right off the bat that a bridge is always a hundred times better than a brook. I mean, better than a culvert for a brook, um, just because it can accommodate unexpectedly high flows and reduces the risk of flooding, generally stays connected upstream and downstream for wildlife movement and, and fish habitat and so on. There is we an existing culvert there. It's not a bridge. That's, that's, that was put in when they did the original subdivision. Right. Chances are it's way out of date now for the flow models and so forth. Um, and putting in a stream friendly culvert can be just as well, it can be pretty expensive too. Um, so that's just off the top of my head. But I also want to say that we can't guide you on how to develop this property. We can only react to what you bring before us. So if you have different ideas, we can give you our reaction to that, but we can't guide you on, you know, how to develop the property. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And I think that's part of it is right now we're proposing a location for the house and, and a drive to be able to get there. And, and a big question in my mind, uh, and by the way, I'm an architect. Uh, most of my work is in the healthcare field. This is something that I'd be building for myself. Um, but having been an architect for 40 years, I've learned to realize what I don't know. And so in this case, I'm not versed in crossing over a brook and understanding what sort of implications that might uh, imply. And so, for instance, that's why I'm showing you, okay, here's where the drive would go to be able to work its way through the site and get to this other portion uh, of the property to be able to put the house there. So looking at that and, and the concept, uh, for instance, of saying, okay, well, there was a culvert that was done here, there. Um, meaning uh, further down uh, the, the brook, if you will, um, you know, what those things are. So what I'm hearing from you is, well, first off, we should be considering a bridge rather than, than a culvert. Are you saying that that culvert is not uh, where, where you would be crossing over? Or That's it correct. Is where it, it, it's not. It's, it's, it's not. actually, if you look at the site plan, you'll see that there's an existing culvert that is, um, if you're looking at the plan, it's basically to the east or to the right side of the, the plan. Um, it's, it's called out there on the, the site plan that I had prepared. And I think it's also called out on the surveyor's site plan. So I see proposed culvert, similar mm -hmm. to existing culvert. I'm trying to find, then, sorry, I'm trying to find. Existing yeah, culvert if, would be down to your left on that. Yeah, if, if you follow the stream or sorry, the brook, um, from where that uh, me, down to proposed right. culvert is. Yeah. Got it. If you follow that to the right, you'll see that there's an existing culvert and that's, that's the one that I'm referencing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, again, I would say in today's world, generally speaking, we try to avoid culverts. Mm -hmm. Um, fish friendly, brook friendly culverts can be as expensive, um, as a bridge and generally speaking can require more maintenance over time than a bridge. Um, in terms of maintaining the flow of the stream. Is that a seasonal brook? I'd call it intermittent. Um, I've been, I've walked the property a few times now and there's been sometimes when water's been flowing in it and sometimes when it's been dry. But it's got a scoured river bottom, right? Stream bottom, it looks like. I'm not sure what the word scoured means. So I'm it's got a to... defined channel, a defined um... channel. I'd say just barely, if that makes any sense. You know, meaning it kind of comes down into a V-shape, um, but yeah. you know that, that V-shape starts higher up um, on both sides of uh, where the brook is. You know, the brook itself is maybe two or three feet wide. It's pretty easy mm -hmm. to get across, to, you know, meaning to walk across it, if that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And other issues we usually run into are around septic systems and you know inconsistencies on the map. I'm, I'm looking at your 200 foot setback and your 100 foot setback, and they're not parallel to one another. And that your map might not be. The reason they're not parallel, just to interject, is one, as I was understanding the regulations, one is 200 feet back from open water, in this case, the brook. Uh, the other is 100 feet back from area that would be wetland soils. So that's the reason why they're not parallel, is because it's trying to look at both of them and figure out, okay, which one is, is the more extensive uh, area that we need to be keep in mind. So, you know, the way I look at mm -hmm. it is, with those two pieces, it's the 200 foot marker in, in any given location that is the one that we need to adhere to. What I, what I want to avoid is I don't want to propose something and then um, find out that we, we've got a problem. An example I'll use is there's another house in the neighborhood where I was listening to one of the recordings and it was pretty clear to me that while the commission was approving a, a primary house that was to be built, one of the things that the commission was debating in that meeting was some future structures. And it was pretty clear that there was a lot of reservation about those future structures. And I don't wanna find myself in that same kind of situation by having had all this engineering done and then come back or come to you and um, find out that, well, some of these things that, that I had spent all this time designing and, and um, uh, having engineers work with me on that it's kind of a non-starter for, for you in terms of that second part if that makes any sense to you. 
How come the brook is not fully drawn on this map? Or if it I is, it, I'm having a hard time seeing it. it. It's because it's intermittent. I think what happens is depending on when you're there, it's easy to follow versus not. So if it's flowing, you can kind of see where that water flows. But if it's not flowing, there's some areas where it gets flat and it's just, it's hard to pinpoint where the edge of that brook is. That's probably the reason why it's shown that way on there. Meaning from when the surveyors were out there to, to survey. And there's no historical information on, on existing water, on topo maps or anything like that. I don't want to speak for the, the civil engineer, uh, in this case, uh, Gary Hawk. I know he did reference to me that he looked at some of the old maps. So uh, I got to believe that he, he put his best foot forward in trying to document that for me, because I did explain to him that I was going to share this with you to try and get your, um, your observations on what sort of things um, could be problematic. On, so on the, uh, the reason I'm asking is because I'm trying to get, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get a sense of that 200 foot setback and what it's following to have defined itself that way. Well, if you um, looking at the site plan, there is a line. So the brook seems to kind of peter out, but then there's a line that he's showing that is appears to be the general major uh, flow of water uh, through there. Don't whenever the see brook. That. I see the brook just kind of going away. Yeah. And then it goes away and then there, there's a, it goes from a double line that says brook to a single line. So that. And that, and that single line goes away too. It does. But what I did was I just made an assumption in terms of the 200 foot setback that I'm showing you on my drawing that just has an, a rough approximation on it. So that part of it seems pretty clear to me, which is, you know, if there's a brook, I need to be 200 feet back from it. Um, it's really more, okay, what happens when a driveway has to go through that area that has a 200 foot setback to it? Um, you know, and, and, and the bridge, you know, the bridge is a structure. So how does that factor into these things in terms of how the commission looks at it? So that's why really a well, lot I'm, of this I'm, is... actually, I'm looking at the house and the house being fully within the 200 foot setback and mostly within the 100 foot. Is that right? I want to make sure I'm looking at this correctly. So my eye went to look for the brook and I couldn't mm -hmm. find it. So I was trying to figure out where you got that 200 foot line. Um, that was just one one question. And I'm assuming the 100 foot is from the actual flagged wetland boundary, right? Yes, right? the, ho the house is actually out right now where it's placed um, is outside both the 100 and 200 I see. foot setbacks. I see. Thank you. That's but it, but it would be the wrong way. That, yeah, it'd be within that 200 foot regulated area, right? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. It's, right now, the house is set back 200 feet from the brook. But it's Really, my my concern is how how does crossing through that whole two hundred foot zone? So you have two hundred foot to the left, two hundred feet to the right. So you have four hundred feet that you have to navigate through. And no, and it's really I'm, it's a regulated area, which means mm -hmm. that we look at the activity that's happening within that area, and we try to minimize any impact to the wetland from it, or see if we can move the the activity outside of the regulated area, ideally. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you want to, that's the only place apparently that you can cross the brook presents a whole nother separate issue. What's the best way to cross that brook to minimize impact to the brook and to the future of what will happen to that brook as rain mm -hmm. increases, right? So they're kind of two separate things. I'm really confused and I don't know, I'm, ha I'm having a hard time with the way this, what the, is anybody else having a hard time with the way the setback is drawn? Because I'm looking at a hundred foot wetland setback. I see a flagged wetland line that ends. You're looking Is that for a flagged wetland you're looking, line? You're looking for a 200 foot regulated zone, right? No, I'm tr well, I'm trying to figure out where the, I'm trying to figure out how the 200 foot line was drawn and how the 100 foot wetland setback was drawn. Well, you know, I, I, I'm looking at, the 100 foot wetland setback. Okay. And then you have a conservation area 
Yeah. But if you look just below the flagged conservation area, there's a line, a wetlands line that seems to parallel the 100. Oh, I'm sorry. I was that? reading that flagged as a flagged wetland line, and that's not what it is. It's a conservation line. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, that's but helpful. Very his helpful. His 200 foot mark on the map is 200 foot from the open water portion of the brook. Except there Correct. is no open water portion. Well, when, well the... when it's wet, I guess. Yeah. And it's an assumption. Okay. That's correct. Yep. Thank you. That's why right now this is a pre-application. We're just making some assumptions here before we go too far uh, and discover that there are things that uh, we should have thought of from the get-go. So what you're trying to do is keep the house outside the 200-foot wet setback, the assumed, assumed 200-foot setback from the brook. And and as much as you can out of the hundred foot wetland boundary, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now again, it looks like the hundred foot wetland setback, the hundred foot wetlands setback from wetlands line crosses right through the wetlands. No, that's the 1280 contour. Okay, yeah. so where where is the hundred foot wetland setback? If on you this zoom, map? if you oh, you're looking at a paper map. I am. That's right. Yeah, yeah. When you zoom in on the PDF, you can see a distinction between the contour line uh, and the and the setback well, line. That's why printer, I'm confused. The, yeah, the printer probably did. here. Let me share my screen. Okay, that'd that be great. One. Thank you. Is that any easier? Yes. You see where the dark, the darker line is the contour and the lighter is the wetland. Thank you. It's a setback. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so really the crux of the concern was we've got this whole conservation easement with this very narrow gap and just wasn't sure what the, um, the opinion of the commission would be in terms of being able to get from the street to where the house would be placed. That was, you know, that was the, the key thing that I was hoping to get a read on before we, we go too far with uh, trying to figure out what this thing looks like and where it might be placed. So the wetland itself is it, it extends from one conservation area into the other. So you're crossing a wetland and the stream. Yes, and this solid line denotes the wetland barrier. I uh, the way I'm reading it. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. And the brook is kind of in the in between. Okay, got it. How was the distance from one of the, the width of that wetland strip? You mean from one, literally the two parallel lines that define that gap? The, no, not the conservation easement lines, the wetland. What? Oh, the wetland area itself, just from edge yeah. to edge. Yeah. Um, it's right probably, in that crossing. Yeah. It's. It's not very far. Uh, I'd yeah, that's, say that's it's, it's maybe 30 or 40 feet. Basically, to, to give you a sense of proportion on it, the, the, the opening, if you will, between the two conservation easement areas is about 35 feet. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That area where you just had your cursor going back and forth, sort of from yeah, upper was, left to lower right. Yeah, I was trying to pan right. around and see if I had a, a marking for a relative uh, scale legend, but it, it says one sixty fourth inch. But yeah. as I'm zooming in and out, that doesn't do, do us any. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but basically, it's about thirty five feet wide in there, and so just then in interpolating yep. um, that that bridge that you or not that bridge but that area that you'd have to traverse of wetlands is, you know, let's say it's 30, 35 feet uh, going from uh, stone, uh, stone wall lane to where the house would be located if we located it there. Yeah. And so again, I guess the question is, you know, what's going to have, 
the least amount of impact on the wetland, a bridge or a culvert. Or and another what, location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is there another location? Oh, yeah. well, what? This I'm, zone over here yeah. for some reason. So maybe there's a reason why you can't build there, but it's not evident on this map. So that's that's what we've been trying to dig into. What, what I was told by some of the folks who who were basically um, pitching or selling this to me is that um, the best chance for being able to find an acceptable area to build the house is on that area in the upper right of the plan. Um, so I don't know why that would preclude the area that's in the lower left that you were just circling, but that's why we've, we started by focusing on that. And then uh, again, coming back to why we're here this evening is to say, okay, well, that's all great and wonderful, but we got a, a brook that we got to cross and what kind of landmines might there be in regard to that? So you've well, pointed out one. The, yeah, you got the brook, but you've also got the digging up of a wetland. I mean, which is mm -hmm. pretty much a no-no. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so it's really what is the biggest impact for that versus putting it, putting your house in a place where you don't have to worry about that, messing up oh, the wetland. To yep, totally agree. And, and as I said, the reason why we started there is simply because that's where we were pointed to by folks who have more history with this property than we do, saying that that's where we'd most likely be able to put it. Um, I still am just trying to understand why that is. Uh, and that's why we have a soil scientist involved now to, to kind of help us understand it a little bit better and trying to get the civil engineer up to speed. And actually, you're pointing at one area which has perplexed me for a while, which is that's where they put test pits years ago. And those look awfully close to where the brook is. And I'm just trying to figure out what the logic might have been of if those are the test pits, that must be where they were assuming the septic going. But literally, that is just seems yeah. awfully close to, to the yeah. wetlands. Where are these where are these test pits that you're talking about? You see on my map here? They're these little let me move circles. all you people over. Oh and how far away would you say that is? Well that's oh. 35 feet. Yeah it's maybe 40, 50 feet. Yeah so you wouldn't be able to do that now would you? You have to be 75 feet away from a brook. Right? Ty, anyone? <laughs> Don't you have to be 75 yes, feet away? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just, I can't figure out what the logic was about why I put those over there. But again, you know, I'm trying to trying to just do as much due diligence as I can to, to uncover what I don't know. I'm surprised that those are over here and that there's no, it doesn't look like anyone, if they were digging over here for them, why weren't they digging over here or up in here where they're proposing to put the septic? But this I was back to when? Totally agree. This was back in the late 1990s, early 2000s. So sometime oh. before 2004. You know if they put an application in that may be logged in the minutes somewhere? There's nothing that um, was uncovered. Um, one of the first things I did, and I know Ty can confirm this, is I went and I said, hey, what have you got in your files? Uh, and so that was one of our first conversations as I was trying to dig up the history on this. And of course, I have requested. What, what might help you is uh, St. John's Peak, you have a homeowners association, and they also have all of the information from when it was established. Uh, the manual that they have or for each chairperson gives a description of all of the lots and tells what it is. And if I remember it, each lot was perked and they did deep holes and they were approved uh, based on land, uh, you know, on soil, uh, what they were approved for a uh, uh, three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom. Um, all of that I'm sure is on file and there is probably in town hall an original plan of the entire subdivision that would show where they did all of that original testing, which this may reflect. I, I, I think he has that, the, the mm -hmm. initial subdivision. I think I do. I just, you know, and, and I can just never know if I have everything that, that's got all the critical information. So again, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm here to see if there's some nuggets of information that'll help me to, to make your job easier. Well, Ty might be able to pull that in for help you at least point you in, in the direction of locating the information that would answer your question about why they did perk holes there. 
um, or deep, deep holes there, test holes there, um, what they were thinking and what the results of that were. And was this approved for a particular placement of the house, size of the house, that kind of thing? There are, there is a location shown. One of the things that's very odd uh, to me in what was approved and it was approved for a three bedroom was it actually shows the house on one side of the brook, um, actually going closer to Stonewall Lane and the septic system on the other side of the brook. And I was trying to figure out that just didn't seem like it was smart to be running a sewage pipe across a brook. <laughs> Right. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a civil engineer, but that just seemed very odd. I figured Agreed. you run it all on one side or all on the other, but not not kind of spanning across it. Agreed. I'm certainly not coming up with a compelling storyline that would lead me to believe it was okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, but that, that if if I'm thinking of the same drawing that you're referencing, that's the way it shows it. But at least, you know, right now, at least you've given me some guidance on what we need to be thinking about if we are going to cross the brook, um, some guidance on going back and saying, hey, well, what's wrong with this lower left portion over here? Because nobody seems to be aware of anything that suggests that it's problematic. I realize the ledge might be shallow over there in terms of the soil above it, but... I'm also hunching that we could do something with like a septic mound over there. I was there. gonna say, I think it's a little easier to build a retaining wall and bring in some dirt than it is to build a bridge, but. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and again, my, you know, my reason for doing this is to see if there's anybody who's got some knowledge that'll just help me to um, figure out what I need to do without running into some hidden landmines. Hmm. So really nothing more than that. Yeah. I, I just, I don't want to come to you with a final plan and then sort of have everybody be flustered because we've spent thousands and thousands on a design. Only we wouldn't be. be told we, we wouldn't have to be. go back. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We, no, I mean, basically our goal, our job is to best protect the wetlands as best we can. Um, and so if there's an alternative that avoids damage to the wetlands, that would be the one that we would push you toward. Um, mm -hmm. If there isn't for some reason, then our job is to minimize damage to the wetland and, and select the best option for minimizing damage to the wetland. And that makes sense. Okay. That, that area uh, towards the left, closer to Stonewall Lane, is that also a lot steeper right there? No, actually it's fairly flat. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've been your, looking at... 10 foot contour zone. I mean, it's yeah. pretty wide. I mean, you, there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at the satellite view of it and it looks it looks fine. It doesn't look, I mean, it, it, it is hard to tell because it's the satellite view, but it doesn't look like it'd be steep. I don't see why a house couldn't be situated there. It'd be interesting to know why the people who told you to cross the brook felt that that's better. Yeah, uh, likewise. <laughs> that's part of why I'm here. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, what 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 were their reasons? What was their justification for that? Uh, well, they were saying that the ledge was was really um, shallow, to use their words. Um, okay. On on that area around where the cul-de-sac is, uh, matter of fact, where the house was shown on those subdivision plans is actually, um, if you're at the cul-de-sac and you go off kind of in the two o'clock direction towards the brook just before you get to the conservation easement, that's where they, not even over there, when you go further, yeah, right in there is where that, um, that um, approved plan for meaning the subdivision plan was showing a house. And then right where that gap is, is where they were, sh well, they weren't actually showing the septic connection, but they were showing the septic on the other side. It just seemed very odd so, to me. So they just need is, to sell the lot. They don't need to actually build on it. <laughs> I well, guess so. so you, you said it was an approved subdivision plan. Is that does that mean that that house lot itself was part of that approval tie? So what they what they usually do is uh -oh. just like a con conceptual, you know, and then somebody has to come back later with an actual site plan. So there is no current site plan approval if that's what your question was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So theoretically, a house could go 
legally it, it could go anywhere on the slot where where the applicant can make it work. Right. I mean, I'm I'm curious if maybe a lot has to do with the septic and they couldn't achieve a septic in the front, and that's why it's on the other side. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe they did think it was better to put it over on the other. Septic te technologies have come a long way. I've been built a bridge and cross, and just to cross. I don't. I don't. I don't. I was just going to say that septic technology has come a long way. They could do an awful lot more with a lot less. Right. That's my understanding. That as could well. be it too. Yeah. I think that would be the thing to investigate. What's the what's the status of the ledge, and what what are the septic options on a shallower ledge? Okay, yeah. I mean that that's great advice. Um, uh, I didn't I didn't just want to assume that uh, it was. This is where I was trying to get your uh, input as as people who have um, had an opportunity to, I'm sure, look at a wide variety of sites, including some of the ones in this development. Yeah, I mean, just speaking for myself, the septic, the impervious surfaces, and then the disturbance and any, not not so, not even so much the disturbance, the, the residual impervious surface, surfaces that you're creating are going to be my biggest concern on on something like this. You know, those are the mm -hmm. things that are going to contribute to the runoff down into that area. And, and my yeah. biggest concern is going to be the connectivity um, between one part of that wetland and the other. So the brook, the, the wetland soils. Okay, and that makes sense. So the takeaway is if we can find a way to avoid having to cross over there altogether, that would be the, really the preferable route for everybody. Certainly. Okay. Um, yeah, um, again, I have no idea why they were saying that we needed to look to that upper right portion of the site, uh, meaning what we're seeing on the plan here versus the lower left. Um, so uh, that's why I, one of the reasons for asking for the pre-application meeting, particularly when it comes to trying to get from the lower left to the upper right. Yeah, I'm looking Ty, at the house. Is there? Oh, I'm sorry, Ken. I, I, were they envisioning a shared driveway with that existing driveway possibly? Because that at least mm. crosses that brook area for you. Yeah, we investigated that to see if somebody thought that. And, and apparently that was its own hornet's nest because that road actually crosses over a second lot. So basically the lot that I'm bringing to you today is lot 37. And that road crosses over lots 38 and 39th before it gets back to lot 37 and then back over to lot 38. So however that happened is just beyond me. But um, what I'm being told by the attorneys is, well, you don't have any right to be able to go across lot 39 right. to get to your lot 37. So that seems like a, that, that was that, the only reason I could think to, to be put in the house back there was if it was originally envisioned to be tied into that somehow. And maybe that all didn't happen. Yeah, that's a good point. And that makes sense to me, but then I'm assuming there would be an easement in place because there is an easement in place that gives lots 38 and 39 the right to cross over lot 37, which is the one that's the subject of our discussion here. So you'd think, or because, at least it would make sense that you'd have the reverse then. Is that because you can have only have two houses on a, on a shared drive in Canada? No, it could be. Yeah, I, I do recall reading something about that. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Oh, there's, a, um, there's a, already two houses on that. I missed that. Right. Well, there's two properties there, so I don't two know if there's two houses. Right. right. They so. can't approve. They can't approve a third property because then gotcha. you're creating a lot that can't be built on, right? <laughs> Does that make any sense? Um, uh, Ty, is there a limit to the amount of conversation we can have with somebody who's thinking about an application before they act actually submit it? In other words. If Ross were to get some additional answers, could he come back again and talk with us? Yeah, as I, think pre I think that's appropriate. I think exactly how you were guiding the conversation seemed correct. You can't tell him what to do, but he can come to you and say, you know, I'm thinking about this. And what are okay. your thoughts? So that we'd be happy to continue the conversation, Ross, when you get more information. Um, okay. Yeah, we're still make pretty commitment. Thanks. Yeah, we're still pretty early in the process and uh, just don't want to get ahead of ourselves. No, it's, a, it's a smart move. 
Okay. Any, any, anything else you, any other questions you have for us or? No, no, really. That was it. Um, you know, I realize this is very preliminary, but um, again, I, I, I didn't want to get ahead of myself. So I figured, let me start with the preliminary questions and then go from there. Well, thank you for doing that. Is it? No, thank you. I, it I, is. You know, I, yeah. It's as an work. architect, my, my experience has been that when I engage with the, uh, the authorities having jurisdiction early, it's a much smoother process than just springing it on them after everything's all been said and done. Yeah, especially with a site like this. Any other yep. questions from Marge or Ken or um, Paul? No. no okay. Just scratching my head why they would put that house there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll keep point where the contour lines are the closest together. So I mean, it's got to be the steepest yeah. slope imaginable there. I agree with you. I'll keep digging and see if I can get some answers. Well, thanks who, very much. I appreciate it. Who, who owns the conservation easement? Who holds? Who uh, has? Who holds the easement? I believe it's Wiant. Wiant and Oak. They okay. have uh, all, all of the properties have uh, uh, conservation easements up there. Okay. And I think it was all uh, part and parcel of getting approved, probably. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because they would have to be alerted as well um with whatever you ultimately decide you want to do have you talked with them at all i have not yet okay i'm still actually trying to find out who i need to contact where i only just recently uh, got the contact information for the the person at the homeowners association that i apparently need to contact as as my first step so clearly we're, we're still early on in the process okay the name of that the name of that organization is now, I believe, the Northwest uh, Nor L N N L Northwest Land Conservancy. I think is what it is. Oh, okay, that's Northwest, good to know. Uh, formerly Weontnock Heritage Land Trust. Yeah, I was hoping that the homeowners association would be able then to lead me to them. Yeah, I have that information in the office as well. Not the homeowners association, but the land trust, if you need it. Oh, great. Thanks, Ty. Yeah, I'll follow up with you by email on that because that'll be helpful to get their input and just understand what their concerns may be. Okay. Well, thank you for um, coming in and we look forward to continuing the conversation with a little more info, maybe. Yeah, likewise. Uh, and I appreciate it. And yeah, that's why the information right now is a little tentative because I, I didn't want to go too far without getting some initial input to see if we're even going in a direction that's viable. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we'll we'll chat some more at our next meeting next year, early next year. Yeah, if the weather and... cooperates. That's the <laughs> next thing is there's snow up there right now, and uh, we need to see that melt a little bit so that the civil engineer and uh, also uh, the person from the uh, Torrington Health District can uh, take a right. closer look and give us some advice on uh, or guidance on what we need to be thinking about in terms of those septics, the septic system. Well, somebody said it's going to be 57 degrees on Friday. And then 14 Friday. Night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> My point being Friday. <laughs> yeah. Mother Nature giveth and she vind vindictively taketh away. <laughs> That's true. It, it almost seems like a joke with a punchline when you get to the 14. <laughs> All right. Um, if there's if there's nothing else, um, like I said, we look forward to continuing the conversation with you as soon as whenever you feel like it. And um, whenever you feel you have enough information to continue the conversation. And, I appreciate uh, that. Thank you very much for taking the time with us and bearing Likewise. with us. Likewise. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, Have a good evening. Well, you too. Bye-bye. Well. Happy holidays. Okay. You too. Thank you. So we've got election of secretary for 2023, but we decided how to handle that, right? That's correct. Um, okay. Yeah. Is there anything else anybody wants I to talk about? I have one um, issue. Oh, damn. So I, I dropped into the shared file, and I know, Lynn, you probably didn't get a chance to see it, but um, it happened today. There was a violation that I went out to on Four South Road, took some pictures, and uploaded the map to the shared file if anybody else had an opportunity to look at it. 
Um, I did go out there. I asked them. They were they were building a little bit of a retreat. I got a call complaint that somebody was working in the wetlands. There's a pond on that corner. That's like the corner lot on 341 in South mm -hmm. South Road. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Oh yeah, Let's see. There's um like the Fragmites along the edge of the road, which kind of runs up a lot of 341, and then there's a pond there. Um, and most of that house or that lot is a wetland lot. There had been some activity, so we did have a map on file showing where the wetlands were delineated. So I went out there and they did have um, equipment in the backyard and they had deposited some topsoil and they were building a small retaining wall. Um, I spoke with the homeowner and um, she did say that, you know, they would stop the, um, the excavator was he stopped when I was there as well. Um, and I told them to, you know, get an application and I gave them the application um, and put up some silt fence or hay bales and kind of protect the area. Um, on my way home this evening, they finished the work um, and I didn't see any silt fencing at all. So yeah, I mean, it's not a huge, it's not a huge job, um, but it's still nonetheless, I mean, actually the person who called to complain about it is somebody who does the similar type of work and said, you know, hey, we have to get permits. Why aren't they getting permits? So, I mean, he was absolutely So rather right. than stopping the job, they finished the job. Yes, they said they were going to stop, but you know, I, this was like 11 o'clock by four o'clock when I was, you know, heading back up the job it, and again it's not a huge job that they were doing but nonetheless they were should have gotten permits so i'm planning tomorrow to do you know notice a violation and try to get them in for an after the fact permit um i'll send it to it was paradise landscaping that was doing the work um but again i spoke directly with the homeowner as well so i just wanted to kind of make you aware of it and we'll just work through it at this point if you drive by you you'll probably be able to see it there's lots of i mean the Again, I want to stress it's not huge, but I mean, the, the equipment in the area did a lot of disturbance of the soils and stuff at this time of year. It's kind of messy. Well, See, there's no hay down, there's nothing to try to stabilize it. So I'm going to try to get them to put silt fence up again and kind of restabilize the area. Yeah. Um, do we have penalties on the books now, Donna? Did we ever get through that process? No, we never did. <clears throat> Why no, not? I don't, I, the only um, the only way that we can get any kind of finding done now is actually to do an injunction and go to court, like we did with the um, the Shattuck Indians that time. Remember, that was something that Jennifer had actually done. I was the one that ended up going to court. By the time it came true, and then um, they were fined but we don't have anything on the books as far as being able to assess fines on a day-to-day -day basis. Which but we had, we had to, uh, some drafted up um, and it needed to go through a town vote or something. And I thought we, yeah, put it, we, we need got to it be on able the to cha change the, or I think what you'd have to do is change the ordinance. Yeah, in we order had to, something drafted for that. I and believe that we did. And I don't know, I don't know if we just never pursued it or, we should look in that well, file and see if there was a reason. It. I just don't know why. That yeah, we should figure out why. It. We should figure out why and try to move that forward. In the meantime, you're saying there's nothing we can do but an injunction and going to court. Right. Yep. Well, could we at least file a complaint with the state of Connecticut, uh, the Better Business Bureau, for their license, stating that they... There's mm -hmm. an idea. Yeah. The Paradise Landscape, you said? Yeah, they were told yeah. point blank and they went ahead and, did, and completed the work anyway. Well, the, the homeowner was told the um, operator did not speak English. So he did, he saw me there, he stopped. I mean, when I left that, there was every reason to believe that this was done. Mm -hmm. And they were stopping. Um, so I don't know what transpired after that point to make him continue working. Um, it looks like I, I said, I will send out. I see them in Hamden, Connecticut, Stratford, Connecticut, Wallingford, Connecticut, Paradise Landscaping. They're not from around here. Can huh. we uh, take action against the landowner? 
because that's actually who's responsible, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send out a notice of violation and I will to both of them, copy both of them and, and try to get them into compliance and do what they're supposed to do. Well, I mean, they've already finished the application. I yeah, mean, they've already they done the work. They'll have to the do an after the, I mean, they'll have to do an after the fact application. Um, and then, you know, I want them to put up silk and re-stabilize the area. I mean, I understand that we're supposed to be getting a lot of rain by the end of the week. So yeah. I feel like there's some urgency in doing that. But again, I mean, if you drive by, it's not a huge project. But it's the principal. No, it's the I fact mean, that you told them to stop and then they blatantly the ignored it. That's yeah, right. It's the fact that you told them to stop and they didn't. Right. I agree. They, yeah. They, they lied to your face and then kept oh, going. I agree. I agree unacceptable agreed so the problem is we don't have a lot of um leverage at Jeez. this point is if they come in for an after the fact application the question we always have to ask ourselves is is this something we would have approved the most important thing right now is to get it stabilized immediately and i wonder um can you do a cease and desist if they're not doing something yeah so that that was the thing that i i was thinking to myself doesn't seem like you could or would be, you know, because they're they're done. So there's nothing to But they cease. haven't done the stabilization of the site. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm just asking. They're what done with what you they're done with what you saw them doing. That doesn't mean that they aren't going to do anything more. You might as well file it procedurally just to get it documented. That's a good point. And require yeah. immediate stabilization of the site. Okay. That's a good point. I can and then they would have to come in. They would have to come in and meet with us. And then we can yeah. talk about an after the fact application. Well, and it has to actually, a cease and desist has to be heard within 15 days. So you'd have to schedule a, a special meeting for your show cause hearing. What happens if the homeowner ignores the cease and desist? And you have to contact the lawyer. <clears throat> I think we need to do something. I mean, otherwise people will just yeah. violate any old way because they, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think you're, you're making a point that, you know, I don't know for sure that they're done. Um, I think that they are, but um, I'll do a cease and desist and then I'll get a hold of you guys to schedule a special meeting within 15 days to cause hearing. The cease and desist should probably include wording around the idea of immediate stabilization of the site with a, de a date, a date. Okay. Like it's gonna rain what, Thursday and Friday? Yeah. So it should be done by Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You feel all right about that, Marge and Paul? Yeah. Yeah. I know Ken does. <laughs> yeah, but we got, you know, you got to move forward. Yeah. Correctly. Well, and I, whatever I agree that when we have time, guidance we, we should have. look back into the, the fines that we've been considering many years ago. Yeah. Let's dig out that file and figure out what our next steps are and do it. Because otherwise, we don't really have a lot of. We don't. Uh, I'm shocked that we don't. I didn't realize that we didn't. So, yeah, I thought that we did actually. I actually thought that we did make that change, but I guess not. Okay. Um, anything else? No, that's Fun it. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> well, I hope everybody has a really nice holiday. Get some yep. chance to relax. And Same to you. Be safe and happy and healthy. And yeah, you know, I like good stuff. And we can take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstention? Okay, thanks a lot, you guys. Happy See holidays, everybody. Year. Happy Hello. holidays. Bye. Thank you, Thank you again, soon. Marge, for uh, referring us to your arborist. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. No. Happy oh, holidays. Boy, she she jumped. Okay. See you later. <laughs> no Bye. Take care.